Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dom and today we are going over all of the announcements that happened during the WWDC 2014 keynote, including iOS 8 and OS 10 Yosemite. So what can you expect from these two new operating systems? Well, let's go ahead and find out. So starting out with OS X Yosemite, this is based on another location as Mavericks was from last year because, well, Apple ran out of cat names to use. So we are moving on to locations and there are plenty of them to name software versions after. So you can expect this trend to continue on throughout the years, but Apple has decided to go with Yosemite for this year's theme. Now there are plenty of new features that go along with OS X Yosemite, but one of the biggest changes you may notice is visually. Apple has given it a facelift. Now we're not quite to the flatness that comes along with iOS 7, but you will notice different things like icon changes, different colors being used throughout the user interface, and we also do have this Windows arrow type of translucency that maybe you remember from back in the Vista days. So that's kind of another change as well. Now for those of you that aren't a fan of the bright and white UI, Apple has introduced a new dark mode that will be available with OS 10 Yosemite. So you can kind of tone things down a bit if you're not a huge fan of the bright white UI. Along with that, we have some new features for Notification Center, including customizable widgets that you can extend from different apps that are available for OS 10. So basically any apps that you have that have widgets integrated from their developers, you can integrate into the Notification Center on OS 10 Yosemite. So that is definitely a cool feature. So one of my personal favorite changes in OS 10 Yosemite is Spotlight Search. Apple has completely revamped Spotlight Search and allows you to do all kinds of things. You can search through web results, you can search through upcoming movies, different apps, contacts. It's basically an all-in-one search platform for OS X, which will kind of take the place of applications such as Alfred if you've ever used something like that in the past. Now, a great new service that's available with OS X Yosemite and iOS 8 is going to be iCloud Drive. And as you might have imagined by its name, it's kind of similar to Google Drive and Dropbox. Let's just put it that way. So iCloud Drive will let you sync files across your Mac and your iOS devices and even Windows. Yes, it's compatible with Windows. Another fun feature that I wanted to point out is in the Mail app, and that is called Mail Drop. And this will allow you to send file attachments that are larger than you would normally be able to send to somebody, and it utilizes Apple servers and allows you to send files up to five gigabytes to somebody else. So basically, you don't have to worry about email size restrictions anymore with Mail Drop, and that is definitely going to be handy, but unfortunately, it's only if you want to use the Mail app, which I'm not a big fan of, but maybe OS 10 Yosemite will change my mind with that. Now, if you're a fan of Safari, Apple's got you covered. We have a slightly different design inside of Safari for OS 10 Yosemite. Apple has replaced all the clutter that's up at the top bar with a smart search bar that will allow you to basically do anything you'd like without all of the extra bulk that was there before. So you have all of your bookmarks that you can just quickly type in the name of maybe a site that you had bookmarked. You can pull it up there. You can access spotlight search recommendations, and you can even search the web and access obviously direct websites straight from that bar. So it's a huge enhancement over the previous version of Safari. But as they mentioned, don't worry, if you liked all those other features and all that clutter that was available at the top, you can always put that back there, but you do not need to now with this new smart search bar. Now, along with that, we do have a brand new private window mode, which will allow you to have private browsing enabled on a separate Safari window, much like it does in Chrome already. Now, another new set of features available with OS 10 Yosemite is continuity, and this will allow for better integration between Macs and iOS devices. So for example, let's say I was working on an email on my iPhone, and I wanted to resume that on my Mac. Well, down by your dock in the bottom corner, you'll find a little icon that will allow you to launch that specific document right on your Mac and resume editing it. Now, the cool thing is this works backwards compatible as well. So if I was working on something on my Mac, I could pull it up on my iPad and edit it like that. That is not where this ends though. It also spans across different apps as well. So if I was working on something in pages, I could quickly just launch it in an instant and resume editing that document on my Mac or vice versa. And along with that, we do have the expansion of SMS and phone calls 
to OS 10. So as Apple referred to it, we're talking about your green bubble friends. And I'm a green bubble friend, so I can appreciate this kind of feature. Now this will allow you to send and receive SMS messages and phone calls directly from your Mac that's connected to your iPhone. So it's a pretty handy feature and you can even have your phone plugged in somewhere else, maybe in the other room or something, and be able to utilize the calling and text messaging features available on your iPhone. So we're not just talking about iMessage here, we're talking about straight up SMS messages to other users that don't use an iPhone or an iOS device. So it's very, very helpful in my opinion. And like I said, I'm one of those green bubble friends right now. So I could definitely appreciate the addition of SMS and phone calls to OS 10 Yosemite. Now overall, OS 10 Yosemite is filled with a bunch of features and probably tons more that they didn't announce. But I will tell you that there is a ton of integration that goes along with iOS 8 as well, and we are going to jump into that right now. Now, as I mentioned before, we do have continuity, which is available on OS 10 Yosemite, but that also translates over to iOS 8. So we have the same editing capabilities between iPhone and iPad, as well as the ability to send and receive phone calls and SMS messages between those devices, which is extremely helpful in my opinion. Apple has also streamlined the notification center to only include the notifications view and the today view and it's also allowing developers to make widgets for the notification center so maybe your favorite app here in the near future will have a widget that will allow you to do things like the ebay widget that they showed off in the keynote which allowed them to actually bid on an item right from the notification center which again very, very helpful feature that we probably should have had a long time ago, but at least it's here now. Another amazing feature that's coming along with iOS 8, and it sucks it took them this long to do it, but we have Quick Reply. So this will allow you to quickly reply to messages or other notifications wherever you are in iOS. So for example, if I'm on the lock screen, I have options to swipe over and quickly access menu options for that, or if I'm inside of another app or anywhere else in iOS, when the banner pops up at the top, all I have to do is pull down on that and I can access the quick reply option and be able to quickly send a message back. Now, like I said, this does work with other apps as well. So if you have a calendar event that pops up, you can pull down and be able to address that. Or maybe one of your friends posts something on Facebook, if you see that banner pop up, swipe down on the banner and you have the ability to like it or comment, things like that. So very, very helpful feature. I can't believe it took them this long to come out with Quick Reply, but it is finally here. Now we also do have a new feature that you might find interesting, which is favorites in the multitask switcher. So if you pull up the app switcher on iOS 8, you'll actually see favorite contacts across the top, which will allow you to maybe quickly call somebody, FaceTime, or send a message right there from the app switcher, which is nice instead of having to open up the phone app or the contacts app to access them. They're all right there inside of the app switcher and those are pretty much all of your favorited contacts or the ones that you access the most. Now, while we're talking about messaging and contacts, Apple has revamped the keyboard in iOS 8. And first off, they're going to allow developers to integrate third-party keyboards natively across iOS 8. But along with that, we do have QuickType which is basically your typical Android predictive text. So you'll have different suggestions pop up across the top of the keyboard as you type, and hopefully that will increase the speed of which you type on your iOS device. We do also have useful features in the Messages app, such as custom names for group messages, the ability to add and remove people from the group chat. We have do not disturb toggles on a per thread level. We have the ability to share the location in a conversation and quickly glance at attachments. Now, along with that, we have a new tap to talk feature, which will allow you to quickly tap and hold the microphone button to send an audio message to somebody in your messages app. So I can quickly hold that down and maybe say something to one of my friends and they'll receive an audio message on their end, which they can play back from the lock screen or in line within the messages app. Not only that, but the same goes with video. So you can send in line video messages right in the messages app and they can be played that way as well. So it's a very, very useful feature. Apple did not announce an iWatch, but they did announce their new health integration, which is the health app. And it's basically going to be an aggregator between all kinds of different health accessories that are available for iOS. So it'll pull all that information into one place and allow you to quickly see all of your statistics without having to open up every single app for every health device that you have. Another important feature that Apple announced is the ability to use the 
Hey Siri command. And this is going to be similar to your OK Google Now or OK Glass command, and it will allow you to give Siri specific commands without touching your device. Another thing I did want to touch on is the ability for developers to integrate Touch ID into their apps. Now this is going to be huge for third-party applications, allowing you to authenticate different apps with your fingerprint, and hopefully we'll see things jump on board like PayPal and eBay and different popular apps like that, maybe even Amazon for shopping, things like that, to use Touch ID to authenticate your payment methods for those different applications. And along with that, they did announce HomeKit, which is kind of a centralized home automation hub for iOS devices. So this will basically be an API that will allow developers to integrate their home automation devices such as lights, garage door openers, door locks, things like that into iOS and even use Siri to invoke commands. So I could say, hey Siri, open up my garage door and Siri will then prompt the home automation device to open the garage door. So pretty amazing stuff coming down the pipeline with home automation and Apple, and maybe we'll see them dabble into home automation themselves in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed this overview video, and I know I didn't go over every single feature available with OS 10 Yosemite and iOS 8, but there is so much to cover. Let me know what you think about OS 10 Yosemite and iOS 8 down in the comment section below, and if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching everybody. This is Dom and have a great day. Wow.